Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Thursday, August the 8th, 2019. Let's stop uh, first at a look at the Tropical Cyclones site here from the University of Wisconsin. They have this neat site called the Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies, their Tropical Cyclone webpage, and on it, you get a global perspective as to what is happening, and in some cases, what is not happening, in the case of the Atlantic, and most of the Pacific over here. But if we jump over to the Western Pacific, we do have a couple of typhoons, one of them a so-called super typhoon here, Lakima, and then we have this other one over here, Crosa, and uh, it is Lakima that is of interest to me because not only you know I mean look it's going through uh, an area where people live so of course it's interesting but also that this is where the activity is now and eventually it's going to die off and eventually move into the Atlantic Basin and this just shows you that it's not like the entire globe is tropical cyclone free so here's where we have been with the track of it and it's now moving here through the extreme southwest portion of the Ryukyu island chain, uh, part of Japan down here, this archipelago. And it's either Ryukyu or Ryukyu. Um, one day I'll get James Reynolds on Skype or something, and we can ask him how to pronounce all these areas. Uh, I know how to pronounce Taiwan, and I know how to pronounce China, which is where this is headed. And uh, you got to watch up here where um, this makes landfall later on maybe some of that onshore flow could pile up the surge here in uh, what is that Shanghai Bay the Shanghai region up here if I'm not mistaken uh, but a pretty powerful typhoon super typhoon as it's called when it reaches a certain strength and if we look at what James Reynolds he was over there this is some footage that uh, that he got we will go full screen maybe if it'll let me it's not gonna let me unavailable that's fine anyway here's some video that he shot I wanted to show you this and I'm gonna show you some extraordinary things that the typhoon did alright so just a quick example you can go to his Twitter site uh, Earth Uncut TV and see the rest I don't want to spoil it for you but look at this look at this radar animation from Brian McNoldy now James Reynolds was over here but watch this island right here how this dances around that look at that are you kidding me I mean that's like missing a putt from six feet out so look at these two little islands right here and the core of this very dangerous typhoon uh, darn near category five on the Saffir Simpson scale if it was an Atlantic hurricane look how it's just gonna go right for these islands and then it just goes Whoop, right around a little shuffle there that's amazing and what it is if you watch closely and this is where the science of this becomes so fascinating you have the larger circulation going on and this concentric not quite eye wall but you do have this outer wind maxima and then this sort of smaller core inside and that wobbles around inside of there in these motions and you can see it doing so even more after it passes and there's a whole physics and science behind that that's really fascinating and it makes a huge difference out in these islands here especially you know because these two islands didn't get the eye but they stayed in that very nasty northwest core and for Mr. Reynolds here James Reynolds he was over here on Ishigaki if that's how you say it um, and he missed the actual core you know and you can see early on it looked like it was coming uh, seemingly towards him you see these wobbles you know, it was like northwest and it lurched more to the north or to the west there and then it really looked like well maybe it's gonna come right over there and get him and, and it didn't so why does all this matter well if you're into extreme weather this is a very interesting phenomenon but this also is very important when we have landfalls in the United States and elsewhere islands of the Caribbean etc because these wobbles can make the difference in who gets the core of these violent tropical cyclones 
and who does not. And in the case of this particular system, you know, while certainly around here it's nasty, it was in that inner core, that small donut within the larger donut where things were the worst. And we saw that with Michael, that, you know, Mexico Beach over to Panama City, that's where the worst of the damage was in the core of the wind field. You wobble that thing, you know, to the left or west just a little bit more, the core of Michael, and the core could have come right over Panama City Beach. Okay, and you would have had substantially more damage. And Mexico Beach would not be nearly as impacted. And so these wobbles matter. It's very interesting to see it in real time. And it's awesome that somebody like Brian McNoldy, um, and you can look at the web address right there. You know what? When I'm done, I'll post this link in the description of today's video. Uh, Mr. McNoldy does these animations down there at the Rosenthal Center uh, School at uh, University of Miami for any landfalling tropical cyclone in which he can get the radar. So this is where James Reynolds was, still is, kind of hanging out, and the island that this uh, typhoon danced around is right there, and there's another little one right here, and it was coming up, and it kind of went around, and then it kept going. Just amazing. I, I think it is, and hopefully you do too. All right, so moving on to what's happening. Well, nothing in the Central Pacific, clearly, but we now have an area of interest here in the Eastern Pacific, and you can see that down here, a very large area of energy trying to come together, active area, almost like a monsoon trough setting up, and it might even extend a little bit into the Caribbean, uh, but it looks like this is the area where the energy is going to focus. And I find it interesting, geographically speaking, all right, so this is Houston, Texas, right up here. And the center of this large gyre of energy is east of Houston's longitude. So, in other words, if you move this thing just a few hundred miles north, it would be into the Bay of Campeche. Uh, and the only thing that's making it not in the Atlantic Basin is this landmass that's in the way down here that we call Central America and Mexico. Otherwise, this is well within the realm, the atmosphere, if you will, uh, geographically speaking, of the Gulf of Mexico. It's just the land mass separates the two. So it's not like conditions aren't favorable anywhere over here. We know that they're not generally favorable out in the tropical Atlantic right now due, due to the sinking motion and the Saharan air layer and all that. But I look at this as the very beginnings of the pattern shift. Now we're going to get development closer to land over here. And let me back out, actually scroll down to the five-day outlook, and you can look at it graphically. Um, here you go. So this developing closer to land over here, farther to the south and east, and uh, then another system, low probability over the next few days expected to develop and the pattern's beginning to change. And, and it's very slow. We know that because we watch this every day. And in some cases, we can watch it every 15 minutes at a time if we want to with satellite imagery and every six minutes on radar, so forth and so on. But this is the sign that, you know, I have been keeping an eye on. We're seeing it in the West Pacific, gradually spilling over into the tropical um, Southeast Pacific here and things should start going from there. All right, NOAA, and, and here you go, this segues perfectly into this. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration issuing their update to the season's forecast today and generally calling for a slightly busier than average overall season. Uh, and I think you've heard me talk about it ever since, you know, last season that I didn't think El Nino was going to be that big of an issue. Uh, at least the signs weren't there. I'm not going to sit here and thump my chest that I called it no El Nino. We were able to watch it together. You've seen the past discussions, and if you haven't, they're all online, where it just didn't look like the El Nino was going to have teeth. And sure enough, it has faded, and now we are in so neutral with some lingering impacts uh, from what we did have as a weak El Nino briefly, 
You still have a little bit of above normal wind shear coming across uh, parts of the western main development region. Let's use red here. Coming out of the tropical Pacific, a little bit of wind shear. But otherwise, a lot of the indicators are generally favorable. The stronger West African monsoon, um, the weaker trade winds, uh, the overall strong jet, uh, the conducive warmth of the main development region compared to, you know, being colder. You know, there's just a lot of positive factors overall, and maybe a couple of negatives, but they're not overwhelming in the least. And if we go look at the anomalies here, this really helps us to understand, especially when I show you last year. There we go. I talked about this in more detail yesterday with the INSO regions. I think it was yesterday. Um, it was recently, I know that. Colder than normal along the equatorial Pacific. Slightly warmer over here, so some lingering Nino-ish effects, but nothing that's overwhelming coming out of the tropical Pacific. Meanwhile, most of the Atlantic Basin, uh, especially west of the Cape Verde Islands here, or the Cabo Verde Islands, whatever you want to call them, warmer than normal, but not exceedingly so. We're not seeing two, three degrees Celsius, you know, on the right-hand side of the scale, kind of down the middle of the road through here. But look, when you compare it to what we had last year, and last year was pretty busy overall, a lot of that owed to Florence, the long track hurricane, adding a lot of ace points. Um, and that burst of activity at the very end of August through parts of September, then it kind of died down and then we saw that uptick again that gave us Michael. And if we look at the comparison there, there is no comparison. I mean, wow. The Atlantic in 2018, as you see there, I mean, especially in the deep tropics here, just look at this area. You know, this year, last year, this year. It's just remarkable. And in the Pacific, fairly similar overall. Uh, again, I mean, it's colder in the equatorial region this year, but you have other, you know, it's a little bit warmer in the North Pacific, maybe even a lot warmer. That doesn't have so much to do with uh, what happens with Atlantic activity, but you get the idea that you know, the graphic here talks about it. It looks like a fairly busy season ahead with as many as nine total hurricanes forming. We've already had a very brief one with Barry, and we could have eight more. Five total, they're talking, which with Barry would give us four more, which will be below average, oddly enough, and as many as nine total or eight more since we've already had Barry. But Barry was kind of an anomaly you know, came out of that mesoscale convective complex and it was briefly a hurricane right there just before landfall in Louisiana. I am more interested in what comes off Africa, moves across, and when they develop. When these systems get going will be very, very important. And then we start watching things like the steering patterns, the North Atlantic Oscillation, the Bermuda High, etc. Those are players to be named at a later date. All right, so this is curious as well. Look at this, okay? Uh, and let me use sky blue for this. 29 degrees Celsius, just a little sliver, but there it is. These are not anomalies. These are actual sea surface temperatures. If you went out in a boat and stuck a thermometer in the ocean, this is what you should read. 29 Celsius that far north. That's pretty warm. 26 Celsius, which is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, right there. So in theory, and I'm just pointing out the obvious here, a hurricane could come out of the deep tropics, turn the corner, race off to the northeast and cut through New England here, and if it's, and you know it would be moving fast up in these high latitudes, they always do, and it would only have a few hours where it left that warm water behind. It would be transitioning to extra tropical. But I'm just saying, when you see this kind of a profile, you start to put a huge population area at risk of a landfalling significant hurricane. And we have seen only history as a guide there. You only need to look back and you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm not even talking about Sandy. 
That was also an anomalous event. Very strange setup. I'm talking about a bona fide Cape Verde hurricane that comes up, turns that corner. You know, you think about 1938 is a big one. Gloria in 1985. Bob in 1991. That was more of a frontal system development. But that's pretty warm. And if we look at the anomalies, that's a lot warmer than it should be up there. And yes, that does stand out as being particularly concerning because it is substantially above the long-term average when we look at those water temps. I am going to take my kids to the beach down here at Wrightsville in a couple of hours, and the water temperatures off of there are about 81, 82 degrees. So I'm looking forward to that, and that's Fahrenheit, of course. just want to keep everything in perspective. We're not talking about 81 Celsius. That would be no more human beings if that happened, and probably anything else for that matter. Maybe some cockroaches left over. Uh, 81 Fahrenheit's fine. So I'll just show this, and I'm going to show this every day because I think this is our guidepost. I started out with this because I tell you, and I told you, upward motions over here, starting to shift over to this area slowly but surely, and then eventually the Atlantic Basin's turn will come. It takes time. You look at the Madden-Julian Oscillation Index here, and this was updated today. This gets updated every day, and I'm going to show you this every day until things pop, until the cork pops out of the bottle, so to speak. This is our guidepost here, and the ECMWF does a pretty good job. And what we're looking at, the ensemble envelope here. Now, you remember yesterday it was aimed a little bit more over this way? It's even more interesting to me now because the overall envelope there is focused into phases one and two, which highly favors, even more so than phases eight and one, it's these phases eight and two over time that seem to favor Atlantic Basin activity. We still have a few more days to go. I want to see if the ensemble mean uh, and the actual weekly and then bi-weekly forecast here comes out um, explicitly instead of just different members of the ensemble group, uh, so to speak. And I'll explain this more later when it comes time to it. But right now, for those of the, us who know exactly what this means, there you go, there's your signs that it's coming. And first we will see the uptick of activity in the southeastern Pacific and then eventually in the Atlantic Basin. It's only a matter of time. Okie dokes, not trying to scare you, it's just the way it is. We have hurricane season, it ramps up at the end of August. This year should be no exception. Most of the experts out there are seeing that. It doesn't mean it has to happen. A guy can be, or a gal, 90% accurate from the free throw line. They've made 90 out of 100 shots all year, whatever. That's how you get the statistics. And they miss both of them when it comes down to winning the championship or whatever. Or they miss one out of two. Or they make both of them. You understand statistics do not always guarantee something unless it's 100%. And usually it's not 100% until it's actually happening. So, there you go. You look out the window and it's raining, it's a 100% chance of rain. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. The signs are there, and I want you guys to be ready and aware and have the correct information so that when stuff starts to boil out there, we'll know what we're talking about, and we can try to figure out where they're going to go, and then we start dealing with impacts. It's just one thing after another, but you got to start at the beginning. When will activity pick up? And I think it's just a few weeks away. All right? That is it from me for today. I'm going to put this up on YouTube and our Patreon folks first. Uh, and then I'm taking the kids to the beach. I'm looking forward to it. It's nice down there. Nice and muggy and hot here in Wilmington. I'm going to Wrightsville Beach later. Yeehaw. Have yourselves a great rest of your Thursday afternoon. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. From whatever device you happen to be doing so from, I appreciate your time and attention. I'm Mark Suttoth. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow afternoon.